Welcome back to 7,000 Volts, Living an Electrified Life. Today's topic is your intent. What is your intent when you set out to do things? Is it good intent? Is it bad intent? Or I don't know intent. But what is your intent? I remember uh, as a younger LJ Tucker, and when I got multiple speeding tickets, and I went and got a radar detector, and I still got speeding tickets. And so in my mind at the time, the unwise, uneducated mind at the time, my intent was I have to get the best radar detector that it was so I can get away with speeding until I became educated and wise. And I got my last ticket, I think in the year 2000, 24 years ago, and I haven't got one since. And because I came to the realization is I know how to not get a speeding ticket. It was simple. It was the simplest answer that I can come up with. So not the speed. <laughs> the more you speed, the more tickets you're going to get. The less you speed, the less tickets you're going to get. So I made a conscious effort at that time and that moment that I'm not going to be a violator of the speeding law. So guess what? The end result was... I don't get speeding tickets, and I don't have a radar detector in any of my vehicles, nor do I search to have a radar detector. I don't care about the best radar detector. The best radar detector a person can have is not the speed. And when I really thought about it and I think about it today, it, it's pretty funny when I say this out loud. I was in a rush to go to nowhere. I just, just a speed, I guess I had a need for speed for whatever reason. Uh, Wearing a size 15 shoe, my heavy foot just got on the gas pedal and mashed the gas with no intent. I had no intent. I had nowhere to be. I wasn't late for work. I wasn't late for a meeting. Back then, life was just boring. I was just a, a young kid that sped just to speed. There was no reason, no rhyme of reason to speed. So I asked that question again, what is your intent? when it comes to your personal life, when it comes to driving, when it comes to <clears throat> making the decisions that's gonna benefit you and other people around you. Uh, I'm, I'm very uh, sad today, and I wanna give my condolences to uh, a gentleman that lost his life this week to over 7,000 volts of electricity. Either he didn't have the experience enough because um, when, I, when I saw the videos on TV, how charred the truck was in a position of where the tree was in parallel to the power lines, there's no way that he should have been trimming that tree, which w reminds me of my own story. When, when, when the electricity arced over to me, I, I didn't know. Like, there was no intent. I, I didn't know. I didn't even know I was even in nowhere near of that type of danger when it happened. Like in today's world, in fact, I just dealt with it this week. A uh, customer wanted a couple of palms trimmed, and I looked at the palms under the power line, and I, and I explained to the customer the only way those palms are going to get touched are, is to get removed. And then she went and asked, well, well, how would you remove them then? And I told her, it's simple. I'm going to call the power company to get a 10-foot clearance, or they're going to cut the power so I can safely remove the trees. It gets no easier or simpler than that. And as a business owner, I understand that. I understand it a thousand percent. And I always got to explain these things to people around me, especially my guys. Because in their mind, they see things totally different. They can't see it from my view. They can't see the over 20 years experience. They can't see my failures. So when I stop and I educate them on doing things a certain way, it's, to me, it's not a game but it's like chess. I see so many moves of head to it's so simplified. I can project and see what's going to happen before they even knew that it was going to be a problem that exists. So my intent when I deal with my guys and I deal with these situations is to be safe, to be efficient as possible. And so with that intent, that intent comes with a, a double edged sword because people get alienated because Everybody want to figure things out for themselves, and I'm all for it. 
again, on this podcast, I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. My intent is not to tell you what to do and how to do it. It's to give you valuable information and you do with it as you see fit. Because my intent is to be a positive impact in your lives and people's lives around the world directly and indirectly, if that's possible. So that's my intent. My intent is not to sell you anything or change your way of thinking to my way of thinking. My intent is to give you material and educate you so you can live an abundant life. When we learn our intent, life becomes very simple. It's uh, when I was on a dating scene and before I got married, this, you know, a long time ago, you know, before I got married, you know, the questions when you meet people that they ask, well, what happened to your last relationship? And it took me not long to figure this out. Um, when that's a, that's a, that's a double edged sword question. And I learned how to, in my opinion, answer that question the right way. First of all, it's a question that, that doesn't need to really be asked not for a wise and a mature person. It, it's simple. What happened to your last relationship? We weren't a good fit, it didn't work. We don't do that. Some people like to weaponize the other person by getting this information so they can use it against them. Well, what happened? Why didn't it happen with this girl? Or why didn't it happen with this guy? And what people tend to do is talk about all the bad. Well, they, they was just such a horrible person. They did this. No. You don't have a whole lot of horrible per people out there. You got people that does things the way they do them. That's just it. And it either it's a good fit or it's not. It's simple. It's simple math. What is the intent? In fact, what is the intent of that question when you ask a person, why didn't your last relationship work? Oh, because I wasn't perfect or I wasn't good enough? It's, it's a question, in my opinion that doesn't really need to be asked. What's the intent of that question? What's so valuable about that information that you really need to know? How about get to know the person and then you make your own judgment and opinion about that, per that person, that friendship. Because once you put a seed of anything in a person's mind, it, they tend to focus on that. Like for an abusive guy, well, my girlfriend made me mad one day and I hit her. Do I agree with that? Absolutely not. But now you just told a person that you don't even know something negative that's in their mind that either just broke the relationship or put them on the edge about this relationship for infinity of that relationship. It's, it's like you have to value your privacy. It's like as a youth getting in trouble with the law being convicted, dealing with my troubles, that's not a conversation starter when you meet people. I'll give you an example. Hey, Mr. Johnson, L.J. Tucker, I'm here to give you an estimate for your trees. By the way, I got convicted of a felony for armed robbery back in the day. After they take their jaw up off the floor, they're going to kick me off their property. This is true. I, I remember before I started my own business and it was one of the questions on the job interview I went on. I checked the box, I'm a convicted felon. And so I'm sitting in this interview room with three people and they said, oh, we see that you checked this box that you're a convicted felon. Uh, tell us about it. I'm like, yeah, I got convicted of armed robbery and this. And as everybody tensed up in their seat, that interview was over less than three or four minutes. And, and I haven't heard <laughs> from that company to this day is what is the intent when you tell people you don't know all your most vulnerable secrets in the beginning? Like, is that being deceitful? Is that being dishonest? Absolutely not. Because you have to give yourself a fighting chance. Your past matters in some sort of a way, but it has to be privileged information when you're ready to release it to the new people you invite in your life. Again, it's not a conversation starter. It's what is the intent, the intent, what is the intent of some of these questions that we're asked, people that we don't even know? How much information do you want to give? 
what's the intent of giving too much information when you're telling people all of your business before you even know this person? You have to understand the right to protect your own privacy. Because when we get into those type of situations, it's almost like we always gravitate to the negative part of why it didn't work. Hey, this person was a great person. They did this. We cooked for each other, we held each other's hands, we did so many things together, and at some point we just realized it wasn't a good fit. That's the simplest answer that a person can give. You know, certainly if you get fired from a couple of jobs and you go for a new job interview, you don't want to give all the negative baggage of what happened. Hey, it was going on good, we worked here for a couple of years, and then at a certain point, it wasn't a good fit. We was not a good fit for each other. Why, why focus on any negativity that caused you trauma and pain earlier? You grow from it so you can find a strategic way on how you talk about it. Because during growth, in order for a healing process to begin uh, through death, uh, losing a family member or a loved one, you know, you can talk about it and grieve in the beginning, but at some point you have to let that healing process begin. But if you lose someone close to you and you, every day it just, you keep bringing it up and up, it's, it's, it's quite frankly hard to allow that healing process to begin. Certain things can't be taught. I can give you directions on how to do, how to do things a certain way, but naturally some things just has to come to you. like the recipe for cornbread on the Jiffy Box. You put the egg in, you put a half a cup of milk, you put your oil or your butter in there and you blend it all together, stick it in the oven for 20 minutes at 400 degrees, you have your basic cornbread. It gets no simpler than that. But then when you come to the Tucker house to get some of the cornbread that we make, if we decide to use that Jiff Jiffy's box, we're going to cook what we call a spin on it. So we're going to put some stink on it. We're going we're gonna to make it our own. We're going to throw some old sour cream in there. We might throw a little sugar in there. And then we're going to whip it up, and it's going to be a whole different product. My, my daughter, Olivia, she's, a, she's notorious for following directions to the T. And it's hard to break her off that, and not that I'm trying to. But that's her thing. She's learning her way. She follows directions. That's what makes her great at what she does because she follows directions. Me, I can read the directions one time and understand the concept of what needs to be done. And I can take whatever I'm making to another whole level. I'll give you an example. You have Pepsi Cola. I don't drink much soda these days. so and I'm not advertising for Pepsi, but back in the day, it was just plain old Pepsi Cola. Then they came out with Cherry Cola for the years. You had Pepsi or Pepsi Cola. Now, today in 2024, you can get Mango Pepsi, you can get Vanilla Pepsi, you can get Lime Pepsi, and the list goes on and on and on. I was at Five Guys Restaurant last night eating with the family, and I went to get water from the machine and uh, they just have so many different flavors. And we ain't talking Mountain Dew and the tea and the lemonade. We just talking about Pepsi and all the different flavors that you can put it in. They've taken that recipe and they added a little stink on it. <laughs> That's one of my worries. They added, oh, let's give them this. Let's give them Lime Pepsi. They, they, they expanded the brand. They expanded what they can do with that Coca-Cola. And they grew from it. And that's how we grow as a person, as a people, as a nation. This is how we grow. We take something and we think outside the box. We, we take it from good to great. How do we do that? We think outside of the box and we keep moving forward. Because if you do things the way that things were always done, there's no growth. We, 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 we become, um, we come at a holding pattern. We never become a nation. We never become this great nation if things was always done the way it was done. At some point, we find that balance because we understand our, our intent. 
when you intend on doing things the right way, things work out in a better way from you. Because when we don't respond to reason, we pay unnecessary dues. Like my speeding tickets. I remember that used to hurt me because I didn't have the money uh, to pay those fines. And instead of buying a, a hat or a new pair of shoes, I, I was I was paying a traffic ticket ticket, you know. And some people pay different unnecessary dues, depends on what you do. And unfortunately, um, a, a gentleman this week wasn't as, as I told you earlier, my condolences to his family. Um, he, he paid the ultimate price. He paid an unnecessary due um, with his life being the price, the unnecessary due, um, so it, which cut his experience here on earth off. It done. It's when we don't understand our intent, when we don't educate ourselves, when we don't put ourselves in a position to win and understand what's the consequences of this action that I'm about to make, we pay unnecessary consequences and dues financially or sometimes the ultimate cost is our life. We must take chances. We must take risks. It's the only way. We can't become stagnant. Uh, we can't wait to perform perfectly because uh, if we do, we'll be waiting the rest of our life. There's no perfect time to start moving in a good direction. We're going to move in some direction, but we we, we want to make a conscious effort to move in a direction that's going to produce a positive, impactful life. And some people that just may be on a, a piece of land out in Montana, just relaxing by the lake, uh, not being around a lot of people, then that's success for you. And I, I encourage that. Um, life is simple and it's not as complicated as uh, some people make it seem. You know, we, we, we stay away from the politics uh, here on this podcast. We stay away from the negativity. This is the material, the meat that I want to give you is going to be seasoned to perfection. So it's good, fruitful, and uh, a good nutrient to your, your, your body and whole. It's about purpose and reaching the vision that God has instilled into you. It, nothing more than that. No, the, 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 is not, the, the world is not coming to an end. This great country that we live in is not going to belly up, in my opinion, anytime soon. In fact, I want to take the time to say happy 4th of July to everyone this week. Be safe. What is your intent? If you're going to buy firecrackers to light, let's not forget the people that paid the ultimate cost because of their intent. Their intent was to have fun without reading instructions and maybe blew a hand off or something or maybe burnt the house down or Maybe something shot another person in the face with a, with a firework. What is your intent? When you take that lighter and you light up a fire uh, cracker or the fireworks or however they call it. Me, I, I grew to understand that fireworks cost a lot of money. And most places have free firework shows. That it's not going to cost you anything but time. Your gas. Maybe you can ride your bike down to the pier and watch. Maybe you can just... Watch wherever area of the world that you live in and just watch the free show. What is your intent when you spend money that you don't have on firecrackers? What is your intent? If that's your entertainment purpose, that's your entertainment purpose. That's something that you like to do, have at it. But what is your intent? If you buy a firecracker that you never lit before, if you don't read the instructions, what could be the outcome or what's the outcome of that? By the end, please be safe. Please be safe and enjoy the 4th of July. Because the intent of our Independence Day came from people that had an intent to form and create this country. There was, there was many different ways it was formed. There's a lot of things that went into that, that pot of chili, the secret ingredients that was done. There was things that uh, probably done that you don't like or However, wherever you're at, looking at the story of the great uh, America on how we was formed, it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. You, you can't cook an egg if you don't break the shell. Yeah. Again, you have to accept yourself right where you are and just know that you become a professional at what you do when you understand your intent.
when you educate yourself of the intent and what your purpose is. Habakkuk 2.2, 2, write the vision down, make it plain. It gets no simpler than that. And you hear me quote that scripture a lot because that scripture is just so powerful. It's, it's, it, it's one that can help take you and catapult you to another level, just understanding your intent. It's, it's, it's almost like a clever play on words, your intent, your mental attitude. But at the same time, I wanted to keep it simple by just understanding your intent. What is your intent? So once we understand our intent, life becomes a pot of coffee or a cup of tea. It just, it, 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 it just brings you to a point that, that I really believe it, it helps you become more teachable. Because when you're teachable, it's a powerful cheat code that you can leave in life. And that cheat code is very, very simple. Be humble, be quiet, and learn. It, it gets no simpler than that. And once we understand it, the fact if you're listening to this material that I'm putting out here, or you're listening to other materials, that's a part of that cheat code. It's like you don't have to leave your house if you're not feeling well. There's so much information that's out there that's gonna help you grow and go to another level through social media, through picking up a book. Hopefully my book that's coming out here pretty soon, 7,000 Volts, Living the Electric uh, Fire Life. It's, it's just putting the material in. You're putting some type of material in. Some, you know, if you put nothing in, then you get nothing in return. But if you're eating and reading this material, positive material that's gonna help you uh, understand and define your intent even more, then it takes you to another level even faster. Not that we're in a race to get there, but the more you learn, you become educated. You, you have the knowledge and the more you live, you become wiser. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your time. For more information about my book that's coming out soon, you can visit us on ljtucker.com, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, I believe. I appreciate your time. Happy 4th of July. Create a great day for yourself. Have a great day.